Sculpture for me was a matter of connecting shapes. I found that a lot of the shapes had an interesting uh, position with it, it, it all at different angles. And if you, if you cut something up and look at it a different way, you get uh, shapes that you wouldn't normally envisage. Leon's creative process is just the whole world around him and he builds, he finds all these materials and then he makes these wonderful sculptures out of it. At one point I was having the roof of my house re-shingled and as the workmen were finishing the job I saw a couple of bundles of shingles left over so I had an idea to keep shingling and uh, but doing something different so I went quickly to a used car lot. I bought a car for a hundred dollars, bought it back and asked my roof guys to keep shingling. It took them longer to shingle a car than the whole roof. It's a 30 year shingle so I'm getting a lot of use out of it. But I had a lot of little things going on here. Well I met a doll maker and he had a, a lot of doll's eyes so I took them from him, I bought them from him and so uh, Eyeball, there's a pun there. I made a toilet seat with wood chips. And what was behind that? Well, I thought, how do you get a guest out of your house quickly? See, where have all the Holsteins gone? There used to be a lot of farms up here that disappeared. So this is a cow's going into oblivion. This is a self-eating bagel. The teeth allow it, it allows it to eat itself. Vacuum cleaner with teeth on it. What it signifies. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's Freudian. There's a woman who rents from me in the corner who's a Freudian analyst, and she saw dark things in a lot of the sculptures. He puts images together that speak to us from kind of the deepest core of ourselves and make us uh, think what are we looking at here? And uh, that's what I think is extraordinary about him is that he taps into parts of himself. Um, that are kind of unknown parts of us all and uh, speak to us on another level. I started off with the, uh, my interest in sculpture when I began studies at the dental school in Sydney University. Dentistry is really a, a, a large construction in a mic microcosm. A lot of the techniques uh, of, of, for bridge work gave me a, an interesting uh, background for making uh, cantilevered sculptures and waiting sculptures. Cantilever means you've got support on one side only and not the other side, it sort of hangs in midair. See this lower part is weighted, see this here, that's full of lead so it keeps this from falling over. All from dentistry. Well I created Smith Hill because I always wanted to be to work in isolation and in privacy and also to to, to make a terrain uh, uh, of my own design and because I'm making sculptures I work together with reshaping the land that this pond didn't exist that we're looking at now when I came here I created the pond I moved uh, dirt around to create high points and uh, this was all, the, the, I had to have the land looking in a certain way like my sculptures have to look. In other words, they have to be pleasing to me. I'll show you some other little things. Now this here, it's a tree trunk. It's my Walmart woman in China with the bound feet. Because she's wearing those three quarter pants. He is a wood chip man. Is there a favorite? Because you work in so many different. Yeah. I, I like. I show you a tree I like. I call it the horizontal tree. That was a full cedar tree, with a big trunk, and lightning struck it and killed off the left side of it. So I cut all of the remaining part of it off, 
and it was just a trunk left. So I sandwiched the trunk with other trees and the horizontal gives the impression that it's a tree that's in a horizontal position. These two are based on Hebrew letters, which are very sculptural, using tree trunks. That one is, a, is the word shin, she. A lot of meaningful words start with it. Sh uh, shalom, Shabbat, which is the Sabbath, mm -hmm. and uh, m many other ones. The other one, Sadiq, just means righteous. There's a big letter here which has significance just by itself. It's called a Chai, C-H-A-I. The alphabet lends itself to sculptures because they're like Stonehenge shapes. And this is my homage to junk. These are roofing tiles. And there's an altar of junk up there that crushed aluminum chairs. Old tennis balls, old hoses, electrical wire. It's just uh, an ongoing sculpture. What was your idea behind the altar of junk? It's the resting place for stuff that most people throw out, but I try to make a, a, a setting for them of things that people discard, like paint the tennis balls black so they don't look like tennis balls. I'm trying to disguise it, although it is junk. I enjoy the paradox of, uh, of the work, blending things that you, you don't suspect as uh, to, to be as a part of a sculpture, taking a, a, a tree and, and exposing it to something else and using different colors, and yet the tree is still looking interesting and uh, and nature is is keeping I, we both keep it alive nature and me what it was it like growing up with all these sculptures and well at first i i didn't like it uh, what didn't you like about it well you know when you're young you just want to be normal and then you have friends over and you have all these weird shapes in your yard and you're in your house and, and you're it's you know, it's embarrassing. Uh, it wasn't until I was in high school and I realized that it was the place everyone wanted to have parties. And they, everyone thought it was a fun place and I felt more comfortable in that setting. It's different for my kids because they didn't grow up, they're not, they, they didn't grow up in a house surrounded by art. So when they come up here, I think they really get, get much more excited about it than I did when I was growing up because I was surrounded by it all the time. So it's, I enjoy watching them coming here. It's nice to see it when it's, you drive up here and you haven't, you see this big blue shape somewhere you haven't seen before. It's kind of, uh, kind of cool. At present, I have two sculptures being exhibited at Chesterwood. Chesterwood what was the summer home for Chester French, a well-known sculptor who was, well, was best known for his sculpture in Washington of, of Lincoln. They're beautiful grounds there. This year they've chosen about 15 sculpt sculptors to show their work. I have two works there. They're both on the theme of a chair. One is a large uh, eight-foot chair with uh, uh, cedar siding. The other chair is a, a bit of a spoof. That is a chair made of wood chips, which makes it awfully hard to sit on for a long time. It's wonderful. It definitely looks like you want to try it just to see how painful it is. <laughs> a new library opened up on Hillsdale Route 22 and I, and I have a large chair there uh, and so I decided to make a few more chairs. What exactly is your fascination right now with chairs? I just like the shape of chairs. And uh, so You had I, that chair out front, and then the library took it, so you had to make a replacement. I did do make a replacement. And then you decided to make other chairs along the way? Yeah. With that chair leaving me, I decided to create a, a little family of chairs. Oh, you have this wire. That's what's causing it to 
Can you cut that? Well, it's also holding it up. So, but you're clearing this. Yeah. So. I've been very mechanical all my life, so that's what Leon uh, uses me a lot for. I try not to compete with him. People say, how do you work for a sculptor? I think it's the best way. I'm not the sculptor. I let him be the sculptor. And I don't try to take credit for his work, but uh, I think that combination works pretty good. Two people that are too much about sculpture probably would have a problem. They wouldn't be able to stand each other for forever. But, you know, 25 years speaks for itself. I've watched him complete a lot of his projects that when they're complete, it's satisfying for both of us. For him as a sculptor, but for me, for, you know, I made something work. And uh, I get a lot of reward from that too. And I also have the support from my wife, who I consider to be a muse. So I like to consult her, and I take uh, her criticism seriously because she uh, has uh, uh, she's a, a great talent in paint as a painter. It's fun to be part of, of um, some big ideas and funny ideas and um, we collaborated on a few things. A few things, yeah. Like the, the birch uh, forest. How, what was the collaboration like on the birch forest? Well e Elaine did the faux painting on the furniture to make it look like it was a birch pattern. Yeah, and then we I photographed it, we made posters of it. I do a lot of the photographing. Having this in your world, how has that informed the rest of your life? Well, it's hard to be depressed when you're in a beautiful setting like this. And I mean, even if you're not aware of it, I think it, it acts on your, on your mood. I go to my studio every day um, because it's it's uh, important for me to keep a certain discipline and also I'm very curious to see what I did the previous day see if it's still holding up overnight I rather enjoy being in my studio and what is important for me for the continuity is to be doing several several pieces at once so if you get uh, trapped with one, you, you just go to the, the other one and try to get some response out of that sculpture. How do you know when you're getting a response? When it looks good. And that's, that's an instinctual thing. You'll acquire some, some somewhere that, that, that you're, you're working on a piece of art. And that's where travel comes in be of importance because you're, you're out of your environment and you're open, open to new sensations.